The Trump administration preparing to curb Chinese investments in U.S. technology. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Treasury Department will unveil details about blocking firms with at least 25 percent Chinese ownership from buying companies with industrially significant technology. The move highlights the growing importance of cybersecurity to our nation's security as a whole. Joining us now is CEO and co-founder of CrowdStrike, George Kurtz. CrowdStrike is the cybersecurity firm that first identified Russian hackers for the data breach of the Democratic National Committee. George, what can companies do to protect their intellectual property? And do you agree with the steps that the Treasury Department seems to be taking? Well, as we all know, China has been very prolific in stealing intellectual property over many years. So one of the main things that we see is that most organizations actually don't have visibility into their own networks and their own systems. And these thefts occur over many years, many times undetected. So a big part of the overall security program is making sure that you can identify these adversaries and you can stop them using things like artificial intelligence. But visibility is a big piece of that. George, we've been looking at stories for months now about breaches in, on, on Facebook and on you know, a, a lot of other financial services companies. What can an individual watching you do to protect their own uh, identity from, from these kinds of breaches? Well, from an individual perspective, one of the biggest challenges we see is that most individuals either use the same password uh, or easily give that password out. And in phishing attacks, that's one of the main areas where uh, individuals get compromised. They will give their username and password to a site that will then turn around and reuse that uh, to gain access either to their own email system or to other systems they may be uh, enrolled in. So protecting those passwords and, and using a password program that generates random passwords and keeping those stored securely is going to be key for an individual. Hi, this is Christina. I just want to ask, do you think that the problem really stems in the actual companies internally, that they're not spending enough in doing a good job to protect the data that's in their company? Because we're seeing, you know, maybe a, not enough money being spent there. The technology isn't up to date. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's a lot of money being spent in security, and oftentimes it's not in the right spots. Uh, right. If you think about these attacks, and we talk, we talk about network attacks, yeah, they're over the network, but mostly they're focused on getting to the individual endpoints, the desktops or the servers, and those are often unprotected. Unfortunately, using signature-based technologies like antivirus that depend on seeing the attack first so they can create a signature. That's why artificial intelligence and machine learning is so important in the security field to be able to identify these threats without ever seeing them before. And that's really critical for companies is to think about that next generation of technology to protect themselves. So, George, here's a question for you. So what can folks at home do right now to increase their level of privacy and their security? Is there an app that they can download to protect their password, to protect their privacy? Is there something they could do today to make sure that, you know, they're not, you know, their bank account isn't hacked tomorrow, which I think is what people are worried about at home? Well, the number one thing that I would tell a consumer at home is to Ask the site that you work, that you're using, uh, if they have two-factor authentication or investigate that, whether it's Google, whether it's your banking site, many of them have two-factor authentication. Having that second factor, like authentication of your phone, oftentimes you'll see the text messages come by. Those will make a dramatic difference in making sure that you can uh, maintain the security of your password. The second thing is to look at the privacy settings. I think we've all gotten these notices over the last couple of months uh, for GDPR, which gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more power into controlling what privacy settings you have. If you're a Facebook user, make sure you go through the privacy settings and, and, and turn it down to the point where you're comfortable not leaking that private information out. George, of something more specific for your company, CrowdStrike yeah. recently raised $200 million in a new round of funding. You saw the company's value rise at $3 billion. Tell us more about that IPO on the horizon, maybe? Well, we're certainly of size and scale, and uh, I think given our subscription nature of what we do, uh, it's you know very attractive for Wall Street. I think we had a great opportunity to raise money at a, at a great valuation with some big investors uh, like General Atlantic, IVP, and Excel, and others that have participated in the round. So we're excited about the opportunity for geographic expansion. I think the technology that we built, uh, the next-gen endpoint technology, basically built on artificial intelligence in a cloud-native platform, has really resonated with enterprise customers and it's one of the reasons why we're one of the top rated Gartner companies in security right now. 
it, looking at the world, which country is the gravest threat to the United States in terms of hacking and our technological security? Is it Russia? Is it North Korea? Is it China? Is it, is it another emerging nefarious nation? You know, out, out of the hit parade, it's hard to pick a winner. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, each one has their own capabilities. And any time you, you see a ge geopolitical uh, blip, if you will, whether it's uh, a trade war with China or whether it's, you know, backing out of the Iran deal, you're going to see a lot more around the cybersecurity activities because espionage is one of the number one reasons why these countries are active in this. They can understand what's happening behind the scenes. They can get the sentiment of uh, the companies and administration, and they use that information very effectively. Uh, certainly, you've been talking about intellectual property theft. Right. You're talking about billions and billions of dollars that have been stolen over many years uh, to basically recreate what, is, what has taken U.S. companies and other European companies uh, many, many years and many millions and billions of dollars to create themselves. It's a real problem. And, and now that we see these trade wars, we're seeing a lot more activity out of China, uh, specifically, specifically around intellectual property theft. Let me ask you this before we go. North Korea, we had this summit, President Trump and um, Kim Jong-un in Singapore. Have you seen a decrease at all in the, the espionage, uh, the wrongdoing by North Korea in terms of hacking? I don't think anything has subsided. They have uh, pretty good capabilities. Uh, they've really increased their capabilities over the last couple of years. They've been very active in things like ransomware. It's kind of hard to fund North Korea because of the, the sanctions, so they've been very active in ransomware and, and funding uh, their own activities. Uh, in, uh, espionage has been a, a big driver for them. So we haven't seen anything subside. In fact, things tend to go up when you see these, these big geopolitical events in terms of hacking. Mm -hmm. George, great to see you. Thank you so much. George Kurtz. Great, thank you.